I've been watching that new show on Netflix, The Home Edit, where basically they take a look at your messy, disorganized life and somehow figure out a way to put it all back together in perfectly organized Tupperware and storage containers. And while I'm thinking to myself, my home may be a ways off from that level of organization, one thing is for sure. My photography files and my photo storage is very well organized. And if this is something that you struggle with, I wanna help you out. Welcome back to the channel guys. So what good is all of your beautiful photography work if you don't have a logical way to store it and access it whenever you need to? Now this is by no means the glamorous or exciting part of photography when you think about data and storage solutions. This is not the exciting part of photography that we all think about but it is super important, especially if you begin to shoot year over year and you begin to develop a library of visual content over the course of time. So it's important to come up with some sort of system, some sort of web, some sort of game plan that works for you in a logical way to make sure that your storage makes sense and to make sure it's safe and easily accessible at any given time. Now this starts from the very beginning while you're out there shooting and it's a process that goes all the way through to cloud storage at the end of the game and everything else in between. So here is what my storage web or overall storage workflow looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the system that I made, we'll take it step by step, and then I'll come back to you at the end with a few key takeaways. You may not look into it too much, but it is really important to remember that the memory card that goes into your camera when you're actually out there shooting is part of the storage process. It's kind of where this whole process begins. So it's important to be equipped with the right ones for the job. Now, obviously every type of camera takes a different type of card. There are XQD, SD, CFast, a million other different types of cards. And each one of these types has their own options and things that you can look into. Now for me as a sports photographer, my primary concern is durability and reliability. I am out there shooting in the elements, different weather conditions. I'm shooting thousands and thousands of frames onto these cards, taking them out of the camera, putting them into the computer and ingesting and then putting them back into the camera. So I need something that's durable, something that's reliable and something that I can depend upon. And for that, I recommend these steel plated cards from Hoodman Steel. Check these out, these are pretty sweet. The advantage of these is not only that they are fast in the ingest speed, but they're lined with a steel plated casing on the outside of the cards, which really enforces the internal contents of the card. Most of the time, I don't really feel like these memory cards are built to last, and I feel like they could snap or chip off at any given time. But with these plated cards from Hoodman, that worry really just doesn't exist. Nothing is getting through these bad boys. They're a little bit heavier, they're a little bit thicker, they're waterproof, totally ruggedized, and they make a bunch of different formats of different types of cards, whatever you would need. So definitely recommend you checking them out. And for the subscribers, we've got a really nice 10% discount off of these Hoodman cards through my great friends at Hunts Photo and Video, their New England's top photo and video retailer. So I've got info in the description below on the discounts. If you're interested in new cards, some really reliable, durable cards, definitely recommend you check them out through Hunts Photo. Okay, so you went out, you did your shoot, you ingested everything that you shot off of the memory card, and now it's time to organize your files. Now, in this case, I'm talking about where to physically store your files, where to physically store your photos. If you have specific questions about how to actually organize your files, file naming, folder naming structure, all that type of stuff, I do have another video on my channel that goes into my process in full detail. I've got that linked right here, so make sure you check it out if you have questions on that but I'm talking about where to actually physically store your images. Here's how I do this. For every calendar year that I am shooting, so basically as my career goes on through year after year, I buy a small to mid-sized hard drive that will basically act as my working hard drive for that calendar year. So 2018 has a hard drive, 2019 has a hard drive, 2020 has a hard drive, and so on and so forth. So I've been shooting professionally for 12 or so years, and so every one of those years has its own dedicated hard drive that's labeled, literally both labeled externally and internally on the computer so that I know what's on it and how exactly to find it. 
So for 2020, for example, let's say I did a bunch of projects over the course of the year. Rather than storing one project on this drive, another project on that drive, and having a million different drives for every single shoot or every single project that I do, I try my best to keep all of my 2020 projects on this one drive. That way everything is organized chronologically and it's super easy to find from month to month and year to year. Now for these year to year drives, I use the Rugged series from Lucina. These are kind of like the industry standard, at least within sports photography. They're nice and portable and durable. They come with this kind of rubber orange casing to make sure that it won't get damaged no matter where you're traveling. And the data transfer is super easy. They come with the built-in Thunderbolt cable so you don't have to bring all these extra wires in. The transfer speed, the read write speed is really good. And also they come in at a pretty inexpensive price point. So I'll buy a one or two terabyte version of these for each year that I'm shooting. And if you are interested or in the market for these, my friends at Hunt also have discounts going on for these LeC drives. So I've got info in the description below. Make sure you check them out. Now I know what you're probably thinking, not a great idea to put all of your files from the entire year onto one single hard drive. What if the hard drive fails? What if the hard drive goes up in flames? What if you lose the hard drive? It's like putting all your eggs in one basket. And you know what? You're absolutely right. If you're thinking that way, you're on the right track. And I've been thinking about that too. That is why I add on top of these year to year drives, an extra more permanent layer of storage. And that is the Drobo Master Hard Drive. I know this thing looks kind of intimidating, but basically this is what I use as my master be all end all drive that stores literally everything that I've ever done. And the beauty of these is you can swap hard drives in and out. So you can kind of customize how much storage you want to put into this bad boy based on what size hard drives you buy. And this uses redundant technology. So that basically means if one of these hard drives were to fail, it automatically partitions and backs up that data to one of the other hard drives. So there's pretty much no way you're gonna lose your files. So remember those individual year by year drives, the orange, let's see, rugged drives that I use one per year? Well, every few days, I will back up whatever new content I've shot and loaded onto those drives, onto this master hard drive, onto this master Drobo. And that way I've created a duplicate carbon copy for myself of everything that I've shot. So to make this into a bad, simple analogy, which is what I love to do here on this channel, Think about it like this. You've got the year-to-year -year orange LC hard drive. Those are kind of like the drive-through ATMs at the bank where you're making your daily transactions, uploading footage, uploading photos, uploading files, and moving them around. Then you've got the master Drobo, which is kind of like the vault that's actually inside the bank where you have to go in and they have to let you in. And that is kind of where you go to store or access all of your valuables. And it's the combination of these two together that makes a really robust storage system, a really nice, easy to use storage system for you. Now the Drobo line is a very high end product. And if you're just kind of starting out or just thinking about beginning to organize all of your photography files, or maybe you don't have that much storage or that much as far as data that you need to back up, you probably don't need something like the Drobo. But you should definitely consider the concept of a higher capacity master drive of some sort. This is just your be all end all final end game storage strategy that you can keep in a nice safe place and store everything that you've done over time but not have to go and access it day to day. Just because I'm paranoid, on top of all three layers of storage that we just talked about, I also upload a selection of my photos to a cloud-based storage solution. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is that it provides basically an off-site server storage solution, something that is not physically in the location that I'm in, either my home or my office. And the second is it allows me to access my files, allows me to access my photos no matter where I am or where I'm traveling. And for this system, I use Photo Shelter. You may have heard me talk about it before. Photo Shelter is this really amazing service that lets you upload unlimited amounts of photo and video storage to this backend portal that you can access pretty much anywhere that you've got an internet connection. So for every job that I do for a client or literally everything that I've shot over the course of my life, I upload a gallery of those photos into Photo Shelter. And from there, I can send them to the client in a nice polished packaged way. This also means that I've got the files backed up on the internet. So if, knock on wood, my hard drives fail, I know that I can still access all of my files from this off-site location. 
Now, personally, I just upload my final edited photos to Photo Shelter, but with the subscription, you are given unlimited storage. So you could theoretically upload all of your raw files, all of your full takes, and all of your edits all into the cloud and literally access your entire library no matter where you are. Now, this also is a great service because if you're in the market for a new portfolio website, that comes as part of this subscription as well. So it gives you the backend storage solution to house all of your photography files and deliver galleries to clients, but also a really nice, sharp, sleek front end portfolio website, all part of the same subscription. So I definitely recommend you checking them out. I've been using them for years and I highly, highly recommend it. All right, so obviously when you're thinking about photography and storage, it's a lot to think about. It's not the most fun thing to think about. But if you break it down into kind of a web or some sort of system like this, it's not so bad. So just to quickly recap here, you've got a couple different levels of storage. You've got the memory card itself going into your camera. Important to make sure you have the right quality stuff for whatever type of photography you're doing. Then you've got the day-to-day -day smaller sized hard drives that you'll use for your projects and editing day-to-day. -day. I break them down in order of year-to-year, -year, calendar year. Now all of those individual drives also get duplicated onto a master big time central hard drive of some sort and that's kind of like your permanent home for all of the data, all of the content that you've ever done over the course of your career. And then finally to top it all off you have the cloud based storage solution like photo shelter or something else that's on the cloud so you can access your files wherever you are on the go utilizing all these different types of storage outlets and storage media is kind of what's known in the industry or in the media storage world as the three two one rule and that kind of looks like this three meaning you want to have at least three different copies of your data on three different locations or three different devices if you will then when you look at number two, that means storing the copies of the data on two different types of media. So for example, one on a hard drive and one on a cloud-based solution. And then one, you wanna keep it all safe with some sort of backup copy offsite. And a great solution for that is Photo Shelter or something on a cloud-based level. If you make some sort of system like this for yourself, you'll definitely set yourself up to be okay no matter what unexpected failure or drive damage comes your way and you've got yourself super organized when it comes to finding and editing your files whenever you need them. It can be any type of system that makes sense for you that will really help take your photography career to the next level. So I hope you found this helpful, but if you have any questions at all about this or storage in general or organization in general, please let me know. Make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know what comments or suggestions you have. I always love hearing from you guys. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. We're pushing on here with more content. I really appreciate you guys following along as always. And I will talk to you guys at the next one. Have a great Thanksgiving.